blessing of the Lord it is? What do you think it is? 40 years. Isn't that something? 40 years. And this is my 30th year. So give me a hand clap, will you? <laughs> 30 years. I just never, I, I never forget 30 years ago, we were at the, uh, let me know, the Eagle Mountain Motorcycle Rally. Jimmy Hester was putting it on. And I was the guest speaker on a Friday night. And Brother Copeland was the guest speaker on a Saturday night. And Jerry Zavell was going to speak on Sunday morning. <coughs> Excuse me. And anyway, make a long story short, I come walking in and Jimmy introduced me to Kenneth. Of course, I had met Kenneth earlier, but didn't know him very well. He looked at me and said, hey, why don't we all tag team? He said, all three of us preach tonight. I said, sure, fine with me. He said, and all three of us preach on Saturday and all three of us preach on Sunday morning. I'll never forget this. So we did it and it was a marvelous time. So he, on Sunday after everything's over, he's got my hand and he's squeezing my hand. I'm thinking, <laughs> what does he want? <laughs> you know, he's squeezing my hand. <laughs> Almost went. <laughs> he said, I said, what? <laughs> and he said, would you consider uh, preaching one of my believers' conventions. Wow. I said, well, I can only give you three days. That's it. I'm loaded. He said, I'll take it. And that started, and I thought that I might preach one, maybe at the most two, and that's it. But 30 years later, here we are. Isn't that something? Yeah. My God, I can't get over that. What a blessing of the Lord. It is. My wife is here today. Kathy, stand up. This is Kathy, my wife. Yeah. Hand clap. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. How many people brought your Bibles? Let me see. At, or your iPads or your phones or whatever you use. Go with me to the book of Joshua, chapter one. I'm going to start off with this today. The book of Joshua, chapter one. One thing I've learned, and I really believe this, and, uh, and I want you to listen to me when I say it. You know, when Jesus came walking on the water toward his disciples, the Bible called it the fourth watch. It was in the fourth watch. A lot of people don't know what the fourth watch is. And I really believe we're in the fourth watch now. The first watch is from Adam to Noah. The second watch is Noah to Moses. The third watch is Moses to Jesus physically on the earth. And the fourth watch is Jesus coming back for his church. See what I'm saying? Because like I said, he was coming to redeem his disciples in that boat. It's the same way. Now, if you want to do it on a uh, what I call a word, the first watch was the law. Second watch was the prophets. Think about that. The third watch, do you know what the third watch is? The law, the prophets, and then Jesus coming to the earth, being born of a virgin. And then the fourth watch, Jesus coming back for his church. I want you to think about that. So I really believe that we're a generation that is on the very verge of doing the unbelievable, receiving the impossible, because God said to do it. And I really believe that God wants this world and he wants it quicker than we've been giving it to him. We got 7.5 billion people on the planet earth and 2.3 billion Christians. We're behind schedule. Now, what I've seen in this lockdown thing is the most amazing thing. Just in my ministry, I've had over 8 million, 300,000 views a whole audience I never had before in my life. And this is happening literally all over the world. So I wanna talk about this today. I really believe it's time for us to do what the Lord said so that we could hasten his return. Now, no one knows the day and the hour. I mean, that's common sense, only the Father knows that. In fact, that's the only prayer that I pray that I say, if it be your will. I know the will of God, so I don't pray that unless this. I pray Genesis 6, 3 every morning for me and Kathy, Jody, Jay, and, uh, and my daughter, Mer uh, granddaughter Meredith, which is the 120 years, with full ability, full capability, and full capacity. All three of those. And then I say this, but I would prefer to go to heaven with my family, according to your will, because only the Father knows that. Joshua chapter one, a new generation is starting. You gotta understand this, and I want you to understand some. When God spoke to Moses at the burning bush, he only told him about the Exodus plan. He already knew that Moses would not bring the nation of Israel into the promised land. Take them to this mountain and worship me. Take them. He knew that. It was just the Exodus plan because he knew what he was going to do before Moses did it. But there had to be another man that would take it. 
And every man's generation or every man's work must have, a, must have a continuation. See, God wanted the promised land. And then he says it at the end of Joshua's life, you're an old man and there's still much left land to be uh, taken. What are you doing? I believe he's telling us this generation today, it's time to take this planet. Now, the reason why I know it belongs to us, because when it was created, there were no sinners. It was created for us. Do you understand it? There were no sinners. It was created for us. Joshua chapter one. I want to start reading with verse one. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses ministers saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. So now Jesus breaks into, or God Almighty breaks into a funeral. They're trying to have a wake here or something. And he says, hey, Moses, my servant, is dead. What are you doing? Get up. Get out of here. We got things to do. Do you think God's Italian? I don't know. (laughs) You do what you got to do. He says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Go over this Jordan. Thou and all these people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place, everybody say every place. place. That the sole of your foot. Now, when I read that, I want you to put your name in where it says your. Every place that the sole of Jesse's foot. Say Say it again. Every place that the sole of Jesse's foot. Okay. Shall tread upon. That have I given unto you. It's already been done. All I got to do is now is walk it out. As I said unto Moses, and then God gives you the, 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 not the limitations, but the barriers and the things to go from the wilderness of this Lebanon, even to the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. Israel has still not possessed that land. See, they're behind schedule. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. Would you underline that in your scripture? As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Now, I read that like this. As I was with Jesus, Jesse, I will be with you. So I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Verse 7, only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe the due according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. So prosperity comes from the mouth of God. Poverty comes from the mouth of Satan. Now notice that. He says, this book of the law, verse eight, shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. I want to go back to verse 2. Now Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people into the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. What he's telling Joshua to do is walk on untrodden ground. It's time for you to walk in places you have never walked before spiritually, physically, financially, untrodden ground. Because every place you see, if you'll put the sole of your foot, God has already given it to you. This is our time, ladies and gentlemen. This lockdown is our time. What Satan meant for bad, God is causing an explosion of people being saved and healed literally all over the world. Everywhere you go. The ones that are really prosperous are the ones that are preaching the Bible and preaching the word. Think about that for a second. You see, untrodden ground. Where has God told you to go you hadn't walked yet? You already know where to go. When are you going to do it? When are we, what are we waiting for when this world is in the very... It all belongs to us. Psalms 115, verse 16 says, The heavens, even the heavens of the Lord, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. So I want to talk about that starting off at this Believer's Convention on the untrodden ground. Write this down. <clears throat> Excuse me. The work of, of the work of the Christian is to conquer the whole world. Why? Because God believes in acquisition. Write that down. The work of the Christian is to conquer the whole world. 
God believes in acquisition. Don't tell me we can't take the whole world. We can do this. We are doing this. Because you see, the world is in panic. It, they, they have a pandemic, or it might be a pandemic. I don't know, sure. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to handle this. So it's time for the body of Christ to stand up and say, y'all done messed this thing up. We're going to fix this thing today. Yeah. Why? God believes in acquisition. The older I get, the more I possess. Let me say it again. The older I get, the more I possess spiritually, the more I possess physically, the more I possess financially. Every day of my life, I am growing spiritually, physically, financially. Why? The work of the Christian is to conquer the whole world. The whole world. That's what he's telling Joshua. Now get across this Jordan. I mean, I mean, funerals are nice, but we don't have time for this. We don't celebrate the dead. We celebrate the living. The work of the Christian is to conquer the whole world, and God believes in acquisition. So I'm constantly, my daughter said, Dad, everything you always do, you always seem to have a business thing. Well, it's acquisition. A good man leaving inheritance for his children's children. Everything I do is acquisition. Spiritually, physically, financially. I expect to make more money this year than I've ever made in my life. I expect to make more next year if Jesus tarries. Hallelujah. I expect to be healthier this year than I was last year. Hallelujah. I can still do, I'm 71 years old. I can still do what I did when I came here 30 years ago when I was 41. I just don't want to. I ain't doing some of that, but I mean, I'm going to do it. You understand what I'm saying? Acquisition. Acquisition. Don't tell me I can't when the Bible says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens yeah. us. All things, not some things, all things. And don't let the word things destroy you. Things are made for you. The reason why you use faith is because of things. Now, faith is the substance of, the evidence of. Do you know why sometimes you want something? Sometimes you walk it, I'll just use it, uh, this as an example. You walk and pass a jewelry store. I mean, you, you don't have anything on your mind. You're looking and there's a beautiful ring, a necklace or whatever you like. I don't know. String of pearls. And you go, whoo, look how nice that is. Something grabs you. Church calls it greed. You know what I call it? Faith. Faith. Faith in you making a demand on you. Get that. That's a thing. And I do things. Get that. Your faith is demanding you to get something you can't afford. It's not asking you to pay for it. It's asking you to believe for it. Amen. Whether it's spiritual, whether it's physical, whether it's financial, it's called acquisition. Acquisition in everything we do. Write this down. We walk by faith, but it takes a lot of faith to simply walk. I hear a lot of people say that. Well, we walk by faith. Yes, but it takes, it, it, it takes a, simply a lot of faith to walk, to do something what God tells me to do. So everything God tells me to do is unbelievable, it's impossible, yet it's doable. I preached a sermon the other day on uh, impossible things happen when the winds are contrary. Yeah. You see, the winds were contrary and they were in the boat. Yeah. Oh, but impossible things are about ready to take place. Yeah. Now, I believe in walking in the water. I don't know about you, I like walking on the water. Now, it makes the church world mad. It makes the secular world, they get, they look at that Justin man. Yeah. He walking on the water. You know why he walking on the water? Because he can't swim. That's how dumb they are. That's how ignorant they are. Let me say it again. We walk by faith, but it takes a lot of faith to simply walk. So I get up every morning. I say, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And then this comes back. Command ye me. Whoa, Jesus. He says, command ye me concerning my word. What does my word say to do today? Now command me. I said, whoo. It's almost, look at some of y'all go, See, because you hadn't been walking yet. Amen. You're still hoping that the acquisition comes to you when you got to go get the acquisition yourself. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? He says, command me. That doesn't mean you snap your fingers like that at God because you'll lose your snapper if you do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't do that. But what he demands, he demands what he's already given you to walk in it. Whether it's spiritual, whether it's physical, whether it's financial. I don't care what anybody says. That's what God says. Let me say it again. We walk by faith, but it takes a lot of faith to simply walk. Why? To conquer the world. See, I made up my mind years ago when I built Jesse the Planet's ministry that I wouldn't use banks, which they thought I lost my ever-loving mind because they knew how much money I had in the bank. There was three banks, Hibernia Bank, First American Bank, Whitney Bank. They said, you can't build this. I said, well, the Bible says I can. 
well, now we're not trying to be religious with you, Reverend Hill. We just want to talk business here. I said, I am talking business. I said, I don't need you. You need me. Now, they thought I was arrogant and cocky. No, I was in acquisition mode. I was in acquisition mode. I had made up my mind, I ain't paying you one red dime of interest on this place. They said, well, that can't happen. I said, watch. We built it totally debt-free. We built it completely under budget. We acquired everything around us. Now those banks are going, whoo, God, how can he do that? Now I can't put any more money in those banks. To, to be protected by the FDIC. I got to go find other banks. Come on, Jesus. Hey, somebody shout somebody. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But that's impossible. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Don't tell me we can't touch the world. It's impossible. Yes. Why? This is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. Am I shocking you too much? Y'all going. Think about this. Why are you waiting for something that's already yours? When? When were you going to receive this? How long is it going to take? How much longer you got to wait? You don't have to wait at all. You just need to walk. That's all he said. Arise, cross the Jordan, start walking. Yeah, but the Hittites and the Amorites and the Amalekites and all them other vites, I don't, it don't make no difference. They got to move. They just got to to move. That's right. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Write this down. The further you travel by faith, the richer you become. To grow older is to accumulate territory. The further you travel by faith, the richer you come. To grow older is to accumulate territory. You want a good example of that? Abraham. Genesis 12, he leaves his mom and dad. Genesis 13, he's very rich. Just one chapter, ba bam. He got older. A chapter is about 10 years. Yeah, if you understand the Bible, it's about 10 years. Watch this. In 10 years, Abram is very rich in cattle and silver and gold. You know who that belongs to? You. 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 Belongs to you. He, we are the seed of Abraham. Well, he said, well, you mean, but Jesse, you Jewish? I'm adopted. Amen. I'm in the family. I expect to be blessed spiritually, physically, financially, if I walk on untrodden ground. Now, I'm not walking on ground that I've walked before. I don't have time for that. I've been there. I don't pay for the same real estate twice. You see what I'm saying? Oh, y'all listening. That's good. Amen. See, this is untried. See, by coming this year, even though they all say, man, don't go to Texas. You know how many COVID cases they got. <laughs> when the devil gets close to you, spit in his face, give him the virus. <laughs> Just spit in his face, give him the virus. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the further you travel by faith, the richer you become. To grow older is to accumulate territory. I'm getting richer by the day. Y'all should have shouted right there. I'm not doing this. Christ in me is doing this. You see what I'm saying? All I'm doing is walking. And people said, do you know where to go? I said, I've never been there. Right, right. That's where we're going. Because if I put my foot on it, it becomes mine, Mark. It's mine. Lock, stock, and barrel and everything I do. And all my business adventures and things that I do, it's mine. They said, well, you know, we hope that works. Hope. You don't lost your ever loving mind. Uh-uh. I don't hope this is going to work. I know this is going to work. See, when you know in whom you have believed, you're not trying to convince yourself. I'm believing, I'm believing, I'm believing, I'm believing, I'm believing. I'm believing, I'm believing. I think I'm believing. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, Jesus. Maybe if I make the sign of the cross, it might help. Oh, no. Paul said, I know. See, I stay in the acquisition mode. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Why? Because the further you walk by faith, the richer you become. To grow older is to accumulate territory. My Lord, think about that. You, 
you become that person that you've always wanted to be. But you're not just doing it for yourself. You're doing it to the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you get to a point where, my God, there's anything you can think of. Well, that's St. John 14, verse 13, 14. Go to St. John, uh, John 14, verses 13 and 14. I can, it says in verse 13, whatsoever you shall ask in my name. Now, Mark, what does whatsoever mean to you? Mm. Whatsoever, right? I mean, it's just three words in one word, whatsoever. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. Why? That the Father may be glorified in the Son. He likes acquisition too. Untrodden ground. Then Jesus says in the next verse, if you shall ask anything. Now, what does anything mean to you people today? So whatsoever and anything, it's all in red. When are we going to believe the red stuff? <laughs> now, I'm going to say something going to shock you. I study this Bible from Genesis to the maps. I go past Revelation. Since it's in the Bible, I don't know what it's there for, but I, I study it. I watch Paul's journeys, you know, the different things. And I've really studied Peter and Paul, especially Paul, the Pauline Revelation. I just love it. And I noticed what I love about the scripture is that God records the failures and the successes. So you don't think that someone back then is so much better than you are. See what I'm saying? Now, I've been preaching 44 years and I've never had a financial deficit. Never did. Now, I, I don't mean to sound prideful or arrogant. I preach with the biggest preachers in the world. And they say, okay, Jesse, what's the formula, Jesse? Come on, just tell us what the formula is. We're, having a, we have, we're sitting down having a little, you know, a little breakfast food and stuff like that. Hey, what's the formula? I said, if I told you, you wouldn't believe me. Oh, yeah, 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 we'll believe me. <coughs> I said, no, you won't. I, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, we will. I said, okay. I said, are you ready? Boy, they got their pencil and their paper. <laughs> I said, I didn't believe for it. They went, I said, you see, you hadn't walked enough. There's ground around you hadn't been trodden down. You could have had all this years ago, but you refused to walk on untrodden ground. I didn't believe for it. Do you know how many preachers told me I was going to struggle? You have bunches of them. They're all out of the ministry, broke and sick. I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm growing daily. That's one thing where I was totally wrong, Mark, completely wrong. I thought as I got older that my ministry would grow smaller, which is okay with me. You know, they want younger people. Hey, fine with me. That has not happened with me. I got over 9,000 requests right now. I can't even get to. What is this acquisition? He's willing to work. Let's put him to work. I said, I didn't believe any of it. Oh, now come on, Jess. I said, I didn't believe for it. I figured the more I preached, Ooh, the more blessed I'd become. And the older I got, the more territory I would possess. Do you see what I'm saying? In every area of my life. So I expected this to work for me, not some of the time, but all the time. Now don't try to complicate this. You see, we're not God's adults. We're God's children. And children are born believers till you teach them to doubt. I know nothing about doubt. The COVID thing shut down my new book. So I'm going to wait till January. You know when my new book's coming out? I never learned to doubt. I know nothing about doubt. Zero. And I never will learn anything about it. I have no interest in doubt whatsoever at all. Now, you're not going to be able to get it this year. You're going to have to get it next year because, you know, they can't do what they want to do, you know, because of all this, this trouble stuff. That's fine. When you understand. See, I've learned to fly with the eagles instead of peck with the chickens. Because you start pecking with the chickens, you're going to become a Popeye's four-piece meal. <laughs> you, with fries. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I'd rather fly with the eagles. See, so let me say it again. The further you travel by faith, the richer you become. That's what he's telling Joshua. To grow old is to accumulate territory or the acquisition. Write this down. The Bible is a book of large conceptions. The Bible is a book of large conceptions. What does it do? It appeals to the understanding as well as the imagination. 
Imagination, one of the greatest things God ever gave the human race. Most of you adults have forgot it. Go sit with your kids and let them talk to you how they imagine things. Amen. How many of you, when you were kids, you would you'd have a little horse or a little car, and you're in the ditch, and you're doing this. As far as you're concerned, you're riding that horse. Imagination. What a blessing of God that is. See, it's the beginnings of faith. It begins to teach you how to believe something you can't see. See, let me say it again. The Bible is a book of large conceptions. It appeals to the understanding as well as the imagination. Now, some people get mad at me because I, I don't have half the trouble most people do. Now, I'm not bragging. I'll tell you why. Because the Bible says, because this is a book of large conceptions, you know, and it appeals to my understanding as well as my imagination. He says, how be it when the spirit of truth has come, he would guide you in how much truth? How much truth? How much truth? What did you miss? He is, what's his name? The comforter, right? How come you're not in comfort? Wait, wait, wait. Come on now. now. I'm, I'm trying, I'm opening up your mind that this Bible is a book of large conceptions. It's appealing to your understanding, your homiletical, hermeneutical, philosophical, theological way of thinking if you want to do it theologically. But no, you're dealing it from your spirit. Spirit, housing the soul, clothed in a body. See what I'm saying? Large conceptions. Man, you mean I can have the world? Yeah. Can I get it for you, Jesus? Yes, you can. Are you willing to work? I'm willing to work. He said, I'll go with you. I'll never leave you, forsake you. You sleep, I sleep. You don't, I don't. Appealing to the understanding, see? See what I'm saying? And what happens is the imagination, I, I go, wow, we can do this. That's why I'm believing for 14 satellites. It's unbelievable. It's six billion dollars. I had a man mad at me about money. He said, I'll tell you what, how much money is it going to take to shut your mouth? I said, six billion, three hundred and sixty-four million dollars. Shut me up. Write the check. Six billion, three hundred and sixty-four million dollars and change. Shut me up. Seven low orbit. Seven hour. Look, if Elon Musk can do it, Jesse Duplantis can do it. I'm serious as I can be about that. Because you see, I got God. He's got Tesla. <laughs> Some of y'all going, whoo, this boy's way over here. See, I can tell you're pecking with the chickens. <laughs> when you ought to be flying with the eagles. Get up there where the eagle is. Fly like an eagle. Let me say it again. The Bible is a, is a book of large conceptions. It appeals to the understanding as well as the imagination. So how could you get six billion? I already had it. What? I had it several years ago. I was in New York City eating at Smith and Lewinsky's Steakhouse. The, the, the investors were there, Mark. There was six billion dollars on the table. My leg on the table was doing it. <laughs> I was so excited. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, this is great. My God, here we go. And the Lord said, turn it down. I said, Jesus, come here. A little closer. It's $6 million. He said they don't understand it. Six billion dollars, I'm looking at. I didn't buy any investors making money. I had it all figured out. They couldn't get over it. I said, our first year would be $3 billion profit. Y'all can handle that? Oh, yeah, we can handle it. I said, but you can't sell it. Oh, no, no, no. I said, no, no. This is not stock option here. This is for the body of Christ till Jesus comes. Go ahead and make your money. You can't sell it. 
You don't sell a vision. Thank you for that Holy Ghost grunt. You don't sell a vision. You don't debate a division. You obey a, a vision. See what I'm saying? They said, well, we have to be able to sell. No, 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 no. Can't be sold. Put it in the paperwork. Make, money, make your money. Do what you want to do with it. They didn't. I got up and I walked out. Was I sad? Oh, Lord. I thought it was over with. Two years passed, three years passed, four years passed, five years passed. And this year, I got a phone call. Reverend, we have been trying to do what you say, but we can't do it. We need you. We, I have not forgotten what you said. I went, my legs start shaking again. <laughs> oh, Jesus. They said, uh, we need to discuss this further. Then the COVID hit. That's all right. Don't worry about that. You see, look, if SpaceX can get up there. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where, where did you get the vision at? Three o'clock in the morning, God wakes me up and says, go outside. I said, well, it's three o'clock in the morning. He said, I know what time it is. Get up and go outside. <laughs> so Gene, I went outside. He said, look up. I said, okay, I'm looking up. He said, what do you see? I said, darkness, stars. He said, what's all that stuff around it? I said, space. Oh, and then he said this, no one owns space. Whoever gets up here first. <laughs> Whoever gets up here First. The Bible is a book of large conception. See, that's what Jesus is saying. And if you think once we are back, once we're on the new planet heaven, if you think we're just going to be laying on the ground and angels dropping grapes in our mouth, you're living in dream world. <laughs> you got over 400 billion galaxies that we know of with at least 400 billion planet moons and stars in each one of them. Just the Milky Way galaxy it takes you 100,000 light years to cross it. That's 5.7 trillion miles traveling at the speed of light. 5.7 trillion miles a year traveling at the speed of light takes you 100,000 light years to get across it. This is just one thing. Where am I going when this thing closes up? Acquisition. Ooh. Write this down. You must have faith in God, faith in the work, and faith in yourself. When's the last time you gave yourself a good compliment? When's the last time you looked yourself in the mirror and said, oh, oh Jesus, you did good with me? That's shocking people, isn't it? You know where I learned that from? Jesus. I say good things about myself all the time to myself. Why? Well, I learned it from Jesus. He said, I'm the door. I'm the good shepherd. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. Well, the Bible says, be ye therefore what? Imitators of God as dear children. Why can't you say what Jesus said? He said that about himself. Why can't you say that about yourself? Because you don't have faith in yourself. You'd only been taught to have faith in just, you know, that you're so afraid to step over into the land of never, never. Mm -hmm. You must have faith in God. We know that. And then you must have faith in the work. Can I do this work? Yes, you can. And then you have to have faith in yourself in everything you do. I'm not afraid to preach with nobody anywhere. I don't care how great they are, how big they are. I never forget that time old Roberts called me and I, really called, I called him Chancellor Roberts. And he said, Jesse, this is Oral. I said, hello, Chancellor. Call me Oral, Jesse. I said, okay, Chancellor. And he called me. And, you know, I said, what can I do for you, sir? He says, I want you to preach. What is it called? The ICBM? Is that was the name of that, uh, that, 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 that thing he had? He said, I want you to preach with me. I want you to preach Thursday night. I went, uh, Chancellor Roberts, that's the beginning night. You preach on Thursday. He said, yeah, I know. You're going to preach with me. I said, I am? He said, yeah, we're going to tag team. And I want Joyce Myers too. 
So it's going to be me, you, and Charles Myers. I said, okay. Wow, I had faith in God that he was hearing God. I had faith in the work that all three of us could do it. And I had faith in myself. Of course, I wanted to be first. <laughs> but I didn't say that. But Joyce did. <laughs> She's going to get mad at me. I'll never forget. So he said, okay. He said, we knew he was going to be first. She said, just let me go second. I said, why, Joyce? She said, good. Look, you're not, you're not nervous. I said, no, I ain't nervous. I said, I wish I could be Oral Roberts, but I can't. I wish I could be Joyce Myers. I wish I could, I wish I could teach like you, but I can't. But I can be Jesse the Planners. Yes, yes. She said, I don't care about that. Can I be second? <laughs> <laughs> I, George, if you watch it, did you remember that? So, man, Brother Roberts, you know, he shucked the corn, boy. I mean, he balled the potatoes. It was going good. <laughs> then he had, and, <laughs> and I could hear Joyce's heel. I was sitting waiting. He said, now, Joyce, come up here and finish this. So she went up there and just knocked it out the park. What a wonderful teacher, God's word. And I'm just sitting there going like, and there's people going. (laughs) That was no problem with me whatsoever. Why? Faith in God. Faith in the work. Faith in myself. So finally, she said, Jesse, will you come up and take it? And I, I walked up there and I tell you what, we had a knockdown, drag out, blowout. Tag teaming. That's one of the greatest things I think I've ever done in my life that I had the honor of tag teaming with Oral Roberts and Joyce Myers. And I closed the gate. Oh, the people said, we never learned so much, had so much fun and saw so much power. I said, what? They said, you weren't nervous. No. Why? Faith in God. Acquisition, see, untrodden ground. Faith in the work. Come on, we can do this. Faith in myself. Evidently, God must think I can, otherwise he wouldn't ask me to do it. Think about that. What has God told you to do? Do it. Don't worry about what other people say. It has nothing to do with what they say. It all has to do with your obedience to the vision God has placed in your life. See, the Bible is a book of Lord's conceptions. It appeals to the understanding as well as the imagination. You must have faith in God, faith in the work, and faith in yourself. Now write this down. Christians have misused Christianity by needless arrogance, uh, ignorance, I mean. Christians have misused Christianity by needless ignorance, untrained faculties, and undeveloped principles. The problem with Moses, you saw it immediately. Brilliant man, a scientist. He wasn't looking for God at the burning bush. He's looking, why come this bush ain't burning? This thing ain't burning. Watch this. He didn't stay in front of the bush. You know who was in front of the bush? Metatron. Zaglion. That's the angel of the Lord. He went behind the bush. God said they waited until he turned to see that grass. And then God, Yahweh, called him from the bush. He wasn't expecting to meet God. He didn't want to know why is this thing not burning? Because he was well trained in the arts and sciences of Egypt. He's a brilliant man, but he had wild principle. He wasn't principled, he wasn't ready. He saw someone doing something and that was an Egyptian hurting a Jew. And he killed him, it was justified by homicide. But notice he did this, he looked to the left, he looked to the right to make sure there ain't nobody's on. Then he, he took this guy out. You see, he had passion, but uncontrolled principle. See, the reason why people are not doing what God tells them to do is they have uncontrolled principle. They have passion, but they don't know how to control that principle. Let me say it again. Christians have misused Christianity by needless ignorance. What's that? Well, you know how God is. Sometimes he does and sometimes he don't. <laughs> oh, God. That's needless ignorance ignorance. And the Bible says, be not ignorant. Untrained faculties. There should be more people at this Believers Convention. You're being trained, your faculties, to hear, 
to walk on ground you've never walked before. To do like what Keith said, to, in God we trust. Don't ever take that off our money. We owe $26 trillion in debt. We better keep in God we trust. That's untrained faculties. In other words, you're not training yourself. How come it's some of you churches? When are you going to open up God's house? When are you going to do that? What are you waiting on? If the devil can open up casinos, you can open up a church. Come on. They're going to put us all in jail? No. That's untrained faculties. That's needless ignorance. That's fear. And undeveloped principles. You know what's amazing to me? <laughs> I, I was shocked at this. We now are having full services. We've been having them for quite a while. The ones that I said, buddy, we walk by faith and not by sight. Boy, I thought, now these are going to be the first people back. Sam, they ain't back yet. Because <laughs> they're pecking with the chickens. The baby Christians are back. Hey, yeah, man. Come on, Jesus. We have one of my mechanic's sons. He was on our plane today as we were coming over. Uh, not his son, uh, the mechanic. And he says, and because it's hard to get people for nurseries and stuff, but now all the kids are back. And he says, it's time for us to go see baby Jesus. <laughs> He's a little bitty fella. I, it's time for me to go see baby Jesus. Come on. Because okay, they teach him, you know. It's a blessing. We're training them. When you go open up God's house, what you waiting for? Well, I, I, I'm waiting for them not to fear. Maybe because you fear. Or maybe because you just flat lazy. And you enjoy being at the house looking at the camera. Thank you for that Holy Ghost grunt. Get your lazy butt up and get to work. Excuse me. Maybe you said it. Thanks. Charge me nuts. The promised land is before us. Does God have to say, rise, get up, cross the Jordan. Come on. It's untrodden ground. Christians have misused Christianity by needless ignorance, untrained faculties, and undeveloped principles. Now, how many of you want to do something for God? Ooh. Write this down. The loyalty of a servant is the stepping stone to the royalty of the throne. The loyalty of a servant, our son, we sons and daughters, is the stepping stone to the royalty of the throne. Joshua. If you want to get where Moses gets. See, God wasn't finished with Moses. He's on Mount Transfiguration with Elijah. Talking to Jesus about his earthly ministry. And yet Jesus got them Peter, James, and John. That's, a, that's the most sleepy, laziest guy I've ever saw. <laughs> Always falling asleep. <laughs> The Bible said they were heavy with sleep. I wouldn't have had those special three. You know who I'd have brought? I'd have brought Martha, Lazarus, and Mary. You show up at Martha's house at 2.30 in the morning. I'm cooking. Mary said, I'm going to sit down and talk and listen to you, Jesus. And Lazarus said, I just want to look at you. Them guys didn't go to sleep. Those women didn't go to sleep, son. I'd have had Mary, Martha, and Lazarus with me instead of Peter, James, and John sleeping all the time. For God's sake. I mean, you got you to gotta know who to pick. And Jesus knew what he was doing, but he said, can't y'all not tarry with me one hour? But you go to Mary and Martha, and he just show up at any time. They were ready for it. Hey! Martha start cooking, Mary sit down and say, say something, Jesus. <laughs> Lazarus said, I'm just going to watch you say it too. Now watch. So I studied all these great men and women. And I kept reading this scripture, be ye therefore imitators of God as dear children. How 
come Jesus never had a financial deficit? He had 12 full-time staff. Some were married. He took care of them. He had 70 part-time, so that's 82 people that belonged to the Jesus and Nazareth Evangelistic Association <laughs> that he took care of. He even said, when you go out, don't bring nothing with you. Don't even wear any sandals. Go read it. Now, Apostle Peter, <laughs> he had financial trouble. Apostle John, he had financial trouble. The Apostle Paul, he had financial trouble. James, he had financial trouble. My God, man. But Jesus didn't. Now, I studied the Pauline revelation. Now, don't get mad at me when I'm going to say this now. Now, this is a stepping stone here. This is a big conception. But I don't follow Paul's teaching on finance. You do what you want. Not that he was wrong, but he was. <laughs> he didn't know how to receive. No, no, I, I take care of Monzo. I know how to handle this. Yeah. Jesus never struggled financially. And the Bible says, be ye therefore imitators of God or Christ as dear children. So I follow Jesus' walk. That's why I've never had a financial deficit in 44 years of preaching. Now, I follow righteousness and grace. The apostle Paul, my God, it don't get no better than that, huh? But when it comes to finance, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. no, no, no. See, I saw that in the scripture. And what did Paul say? Follow me as I follow Christ. Why didn't you? It's a viable question. Why didn't you? Yeah, but you, 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 don't, you don't understand. No, no, I understand. I understand this. See, God is still thinking acquisition, untrodden ground. The loyalty of a servant is the stepping stone to the royalty of the throne. Yeah. So I realize it's God when it's totally unbelievable, totally impossible, because it's totally doable. Because now you trust no one else but God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost and nothing else. Nothing in between. Now, in all these other areas, Paul got there. Most people are freaking out. They're going to cut your head off. Paul, yeah, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. And I've kept the faith. That's good enough for me. I'm out of here. I've been wanting to leave for a long time anyway. So do what you got to do. Isn't that amazing? Whew. My Lord. So it shows when Moses strikes the rock, don't strike the rock. That's why at the, at, at the burning bush, they just showed him the exodus. Because they knew he couldn't take him to the promised land. He had to learn that afterward. He had to learn that from God Almighty in heaven so he could talk to Jesus on Mount Transfiguration. You see, when you get to heaven, you're still going to be learning. Amen. See, the Bible said, I believe in the book of Isaiah, he says, learn of me. We try to learn of Christianity and historical things. And that's great. Don't misunderstand. I believe in good knowledge and all those kind of things. But what I'm saying is just to learn of him. How do you do that? I'm going to be dealing with some of that this week in my sessions. Because you see, you got to get beyond relationship. Let me say it like this. You got to get beyond being saved. You got to start getting in the fellowship. Hello, Jesus. Hi, Jesse. Hey, what are we doing today? Fellowship. Just get up every morning. Just know. Just, man. Excited. Passionate. Who, what are we going to do? Who will we touch for you today? Where will it be? It could be anywhere. At any time. See, that's a stepping stone to the royalty of the throne. He made us kings and priests in this life. So don't get mad at me if I act like a king. Don't get mad at me if I have kingly possessions. Who do you think you are? 
Uh, it's going to take a long time to tell you. <laughs> okay, I got to start with Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was out form and void. And darkness is upon the face of the deep. The Spirit of the Lord God moved upon the waters. Actually, he fluttered. You have to go to the Talmud to see all that. The Babylonian Talmud. The Jerusalem Talmud the Midrash, the Mishnah. And God said, let's make Jesse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You noticed he recorded that there was darkness. Everybody look up. See all the darkness beyond the lights? That's what God saw. Forget about the light, just the darkness. He could have said, wow, it's dark out here, isn't it? <laughs> Good Lord, look how dark it is. I'm surprised I can even see myself. But he didn't. He pushed the light. He said, light me. Ooh. Do y'all want to know how God sees y'all? Would you like to know how God physically sees you right now? The prince of the power, the prince of darkness. Everybody look up. Get past the lights. Okay, you see all the lights? See all the darkness around it? All around these lights, look at the darkness. It's everywhere. But it can't squish that light. See, Jesus is the light of the world and he lit up inside of you. That's why God knows where you are. And if you go out sometime, you see a shooting star, that's one of them Pentecostals on fire. <laughs> Do you see that? Oh, Lord. <laughs> Which brings me to this point. When you know you are called, you become invincible. You literally become invincible. You get to a point that you know in whom you have believed. And if you went by what you saw, but you don't, you go by what you believe. You don't deny what you see. You just become invincible to everything you see. And if you want something different, you create it. What? You create it. He said, go do the work that I do and do it greater. Then these shall you, I do because I, you, you do because I go to my father. I'm not trying to, I'm trying to make this so simple that you need a good theologian to help you misunderstand it. Here it is. This is it. This is your contract for life. Right here. Take what you want. You got a word for me? Yeah. 1,189 chapters. Which one you want? Take it. Don't complicate this. See, that's what God is telling Joshua. Untrodden ground ahead of you, man. And you sitting at a funeral. What are you doing? What are you doing? When you know you're called, you become invincible. And then from invincible, you become irresistible. Simply irresistible. <laughs> Make Jesus irresistible. Without sounding prideful, I do that all the time. I go in restaurants, I make him irresistible. If I'm around the biggest sinners, I make Jesus irresistible. Not religion. Ah, people have had enough of religion. I mean, I've prayed with people that were Buddhist. They said, there's something about you. It was a Japanese man. There's something about you. I said, I'm a Christian. I'm irresistible. He says, I'm a Buddhist. I said, I know. He said, I am not irresistible at all. <laughs> I said, well, you need to meet Jesus. Buddha take care of himself. <laughs> Simply irresistible. I said, what do you see, sir? What do you see? More than a gift of the word of knowledge begin to work. Guess the spirit is going to work. He said, there's something wrong with your shoulder. Let me put my hand on your shoulder. Oh, and God heal his shoulder. He goes, oh, 
Ooh, I said, Buddha ever done that? I said, I'm not being critical of Buddha. Did Buddha ever do that? No, I said, simply irresistible. <laughs> See, I don't have this. Uh, suppose it don't work. See, that's doubt. You see, meditating familiarizes you with the ethics of scripture. That's why he said meditate day and night. It familiarizes you with the ethics of scripture. This is an ethical book. This is ethics boy at its best. Are y'all enjoying this? I'm trying to, I'm telling you, you're going to walk in places you've never walked before. By the time you get home, oh Lord Jesus, you're going to have what you're believing for. And you won't struggle with it. You won't have to fight it. You just, just keep walking. You just, just keep going. The other day I went, Kathy wanted to get some makeup at, um, I think it was Dillard's. She goes, there's a lady at the Chanel uh, counter, whatever works. It's Kathy's, uses her a lot, see. So I come walking in there like this. I mean, I don't need no makeup. I guess I do, but. <laughs> so I'm just standing there and Kathy, she goes, oh, hey, Kathy. And she said, yeah, you need some stuff? Kathy said, yeah, I'm gonna get a few things. And the Sicilian girl, she says, Reverend. And she see all works there. And the, she said, do you think this is the end times? She said, you know, the Bible said, what you sow is what you reap. I said, what you've been sowing? Oh, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> well, since she said it, she said, you know, I mean, I mean, I don't want to die. And she said, my God, man, nobody knows what to do. Fear's running rampant, but you don't look fearful. I said, no. I said, I die when I want to. She goes, I said, I choose life, I choose death. It's my choice. Death and life in the power of my tongue. I choose to live, I choose to die. Do what you want to do. If Jesse the planet, you ever find out that Jesse the planet died of the COVID, it's because he decided to go home. Amen. In other words, you get so close to God and God said, I'll take care of you or you can come here. You, you, you ain't coming to Fort Worth. <laughs> you mark my words when I say that. Uh-uh. This is ethics of scripture. When you meditate, meditating familiarizes you with the ethics of scripture. My God, you look at that thing and say, that's exactly what God said. That's exactly what we're gonna do. She said, do you think it's in times? I said, I think it's a lot closer than we think. I said, she said, man, yeah. people need to start going to church. I said, yes, they do. It's amazing. <laughs> Kathy just getting makeup and I get to preach. I'm right there in Dillard's, everybody going. I thought, look at this. Look at it. I just went in to pay for Kathy's stuff. And she was so calm. She said, Jesse, go ahead and keep speaking. I'll pay for it. I said, okay, yeah, that sounds good to me. Let her pay for the stuff this time, you know. And I mean, I just get to talk. And boy, I mean, they, they want to hear about the word of God. Now, I've been in that place many, many times before, before the lockdown, the COVID thing. Ain't nobody said anything about that. My Lord. What's happening? Untrodden ground. Amen. They said, so you think you can live as long as you want? I said, yes. Now people think you lost your mind. I have. <laughs> I have the mind of Christ. I have. Yes. 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 I'm crossing. All right, go. I'm going over to Joe. I'm on untrodden ground, George. And you and Terry are going to walk on some untrodden ground with KCM like you ain't never walked before. And let me tell everybody that work at it, if you don't get in line, you're going to be left behind. That, mark my words. God don't have time, ladies and gentlemen. This thing is closing up, and it's closing up fast. And he said, go to the world and preach this gospel to every creature. Not some creature, every creature. But everybody got to be in one mind and one accord. Just like they walk through the Red Sea. Well, circle this planet. Give it to God's work. Why can't we do that? Why can't? Well, why not? If a loser named Satan could do what he did, I know a winner named you can do what God said to do. But you got to meditate. 
right here. You got to meditate on this day and night Whew. till it consumes you, till it familiarizes you with the ethics of Scripture. And then something comes up in your mind, you say, Well, what did the Lord say about that? Oh, this is what He said. So, this is what we're going to do. So, how many of you are going to take your world for Jesus? Give the Lord a great God bless you. Come on. Oh, what a blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, George, I was kind of looking at this uh, new screen you got. That looks like the Superdome. You sure we ain't in New Orleans? <laughs> Hallelujah. Maybe the Lord's giving me a vision that we, we can fill up the Superdome. Wouldn't that be something? Listen, if the New Orleans Saints can do it when they were bad, I know I can do it if I'm good. <laughs> They're not bad anymore, but they used to be bad. They used to call them the ain'ts. <laughs> Remember that? They used to wear bags over here. Remember that mark? Everybody put a bag on their face. Where you from? Dallas. <laughs> you want nobody to know you from. You belong, that you like the Saints. Think about that. This is just the beginning. You're going to walk, play. Oh, but Shukor, he is on there. Yeah. He said, tell them, oh, they're going to walk in places when they leave this place that they've never walked yes. before. And it will be yours, saith the Lord. My God. Y'all better get ready for some acquisition. Spiritually, physically, and financially. Oh, I can see it. I, I, I know it. I just know it. I know it. Know it. It's our time. What a blessing.